Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. Today I will show you this prototype of a wireless cell phone charger and I will use it to explain how these devices work. The wireless transfer of electricity works on the principle of electromagnetic induction, discovered by Malcule Faraday in 1831. To illustrate, I have this coil of wire connected to the multimeter and this magnet here. I'm going to move the magnet through the coil and observe the reading on the multimeter. We see a voltage induced on the coil and also when we take out the magnet we can also see a voltage. It is positive when we move the magnet inside and negative when we take it out. Notice that I can have the magnet inside the coil but there is no voltage induced. The reason is that the magnet must be moving in order for a voltage to be induced. We can also take the magnet and not move it but I move the coil. The result is the same and the reason is that a current is only induced when the wire cuts the magnetic field and that is the reason that we must have a relative motion between the magnet and the coil. Now let's see how this prototype works. Instead of using a magnet to create a magnetic field, we can use an electromagnet. Remember that when we apply a current to a coil, the coil becomes an electromagnet and produces a magnetic field. But we need a moving magnetic field in order for the electromagnetic induction to take place. In order to do this, we apply to the coil an alternating current. We apply AC. So we will have an, a magnetic field that grows and then decreases following the AC current. And now when we place another coil, a receiving coil, near the emitting coil, in the receiving coil a voltage or current will be induced without contact. So we will transfer the electricity from the emitter coil to the receiver coil. The little circuit here is only used to produce alternating current to feed the emitter coil. And I will show you the circuit now. It is very simple. This is the diagram. It is very easy to build. It only needs a coil made of the filler cable, a resistor and one transistor with head sink. The coil is made of two conductors. Here we have them in different colors. One conductor in the center of the coil connects to the conductor of the other color at the other side. And they go to the positive of the power supply, 12 volts DC. The other conductor in the center goes to the resistor and the remaining conductor at the other end goes to the collector of the transistor and emitter goes to negative. That's all there is to the circuit. Here you can see the circuit. This is the emitter coil. It has between 20 and 25 turns. The resistor, transistor with head sink and I added a small fan for better cooling because the transistor does get hot. This is the wire that I used. It has two conductors with different colors and this helps in the connections. It is size 22AWG. The receiver coil is a single conductor. You can also use between 20 and 25 turns. 
and is also size 22AWG. Let's now test the circuit. The emitter coil produces a field of alternating frequency and in the receiver coil we will obtain high frequency AC. We cannot measure this with the multimeter because multimeters are calibrated to read AC of 60 or 50 Hz, which is the current in our home. So I am using a diode in the receiver coil to rectify the current and measure DC. So let me turn on the power supply at 12 volts and we can see that we obtain 7.6 volts DC. This will get a little higher when we use a full wave rectifier. And we can see that if we bring the coil up, the voltage goes down. Because the induction is better, the closer the coils are to each other. Now, in order to use it for a cell phone charger, I connected the receiver coil to a bridge rectifier and then to a 5 volt voltage regulator because the cell needs 5 volts. From there, it goes to a wire that has the mini USB connector. Let me now make the test charging my cell phone. I'm going to connect the wire and I will turn on the power supply. There you have it. Now the phone is charging. The coils need to be close to each other, otherwise we will not have enough voltage for charging the phone. Okay, as you can see, a wireless charger is something really simple in concept. You just need a few components to make it work. Thanks for your visit. Hope you liked the video. If you want to help me, please visit my Patreon page. Thanks and see you in the next one.